Hi everybody and welcome back to the Girly Girl Book Room. So this is my third time filming this video. Um, the first time I filmed it, it deleted like the second I was done. The second time I filmed this, apparently I filmed it with my 2016 wrap up which happened on the same exact day. My life. And I have no idea how to get it out of there so... It like looped itself with it and now I'm like stuck with it there so we're gonna try take three and my hair has gotten more and more nasty as we have done this video yay and the bad thing is like my first video was like really good and then I filmed the second time and it was like almost better and then I filmed it this time so let's see if I can make that magic happen for the third time and I still have another video to film after this one so Let's just get started. The first book that I read this week was I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. I gave this book five stars. It's a thriller. I finally got the thriller that I had wanted. And I started this one because I was like halfway through this book and I like knew it wasn't going to happen. Like Patrick had his, um, he had to be at the graduation for the high schoolers. So he had that and he went out after. So I was like, I need a book that's going to suck me in. And this one's not going to do it. So I picked this one up and I finally got the thriller that I wanted. This is so good. It follows two parallel stories. It follows a hit and run accident that kills a like four or five year old little boy. And the cops who are trying to solve it and the family dynamic there. And then it also follows a woman who is like escaping to this like seaside town. And we don't know why she's going there. We don't know much of her story whatsoever. Um, I really enjoyed this book. In the beginning I was kind of like iffy about it because we're getting so much of this like cop's family life. And I was like I don't care about your family. I just want you to solve this mystery. Like... Um, but then by the end I was like really engaged. I didn't guess the twist. I thought I had the twist nailed down and I didn't have the twist all the way right. So that was really exciting. Um, which then made the ending a little bit predictable but you were already basically at the end anyways. So I still really enjoyed this. I really can't wait to read something else by this author. And then I finally finished The Sweet Smell of Magnolias and Memories by um, Celeste Fletcher McHale. And this book was set to be by the Fiction Guild. I think I just wasn't like ready for this book. This is a completely contemporary Christian fiction novel. And you know that I was in the mood for thrillers. So I don't know why I picked this book up. This follows a two, like a man and a woman, and they somehow magically end up in the same area when a flood occurs, and they are stuck on this roof together. They kind of form this, like, relationship, and then she gets rescued, and he gives her all of his information, and they, she goes off because they both wouldn't fit on this one boat. While she's on this boat, there's an accident, so she doesn't have his contact information. She doesn't even remember the accident, so a year goes by and they haven't been able to find each other. They haven't been able to stop thinking about each other either, though. And she's kind of having these, like, nightmares and stuff because she doesn't remember the accident, but she's having nightmares of it. Kind of like a, a kind of undiagnosed PTSD. Um, and the year goes by. She's in her best friend's wedding. She opens the door and... Bam, there he is after all this time, and he is the pastor. So she's having this, like, battle with herself, like, he's a pastor, can I still love him, do I love him, what's going on, like, kind of situation. Her memories start coming back. Um, I feel like if I was in the right mindset, I would have really enjoyed this book more than I, like, kind of did. I gave this book four stars. I just felt like there was a lot of communication issues that weren't necessary this girl is allergic to strawberries and does refuses to bring her EpiPen anywhere and she almost has like two like near-death experiences because of this and I'm just like come on girl get it together get it together but I feel like I would have really 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 enjoyed this if I had like picked a different time to read it but I definitely recommend it I think that it is a solid like contemporary book so if you are interested definitely check that one out I feel like I'm in speed mode now that I've spent like two tw like 10 minutes doing these videos. Um, and then I read Things You Won't Say by Sarah Pekinen. I had Patrick pick a shelf for me, like one, two, three, four, five. He picked the shelf that this was on. And I had been toying with the idea of reading this, so when he picked that shelf, I was like, this is the time. 
I've read another book by her. I read Good Neighbors by her. I think that's what it was called. And I was like kind of iffy about her. I wasn't sure if I was going to really like her. And then I found this book in the bargain section at Barnes & Noble one day and I was like here's my chance to try her and if I don't like her then I don't like her. And I really enjoyed this book. I think this book just had the right plot maybe. Um, for this author, this follows a woman and her sister and her husband's, like, baby mama. Her husband has a teenage son with somebody else, and <clears throat> it alternates from all other perspectives. This woman is the wife of a cop, and she receives a phone call saying that her husband was involved in a shooting. He wasn't shot, but, like, obviously there was a lot of repercussions from this. Um, so they're kind of trying to, like, get back together as a family, and then she gets one phone call that says, by the way, here's another shooting, but this time your husband was the shooter, which, um, I, ooh, I can't even say the word now, like, just, like, takes apart this family and just pretty much destroys it because everyone is dealing with it in a different way, and they don't know how to deal with each other and their marriage, and... It was really intriguing. I almost gave it five stars, but then I, like, docked it a star um, at the end. Um, I really did enjoy this book. I read this all in one night. I stayed up until, like, midnight finishing it. It was really good. Um, I definitely would continue reading things by this author, which is great because her covers are really beautiful. So I'm really excited to keep reading her. <laughs> and then the book that I'm currently reading, and this is where my videos keep rambling like crazy. So I had Patrick pick another shelf. He picked this bad boy right here and then he said that he wanted me to pick the second row because there's two rows of books here and back there there was like just massive books that I was just not ready for. <laughs> when you see this you're gonna laugh because this book looks massive. Um and then I was like can we do the front row instead and he's like sure. So then I like labeled each book one through whatever. He picked this book and I started it. And this is Along the Infinite Sea by Beatrice Williams. As many of you know, I read A Hundred Summers a couple years ago, and I loved that book. Then I read Overseas, and I wasn't crazy about it. So then I picked this one up, and I'm starting to really not be a fan of it. I'm like 250 pages out of 450 pages, so I only have 200 pages to go. And I'm not loving it. I'm like seeing cross-eyed. This book is beautiful, by the way. Um, I'm like seeing cross-eyed. It follows two perspectives. It follows this woman who like sells a car to this woman in the 60s. So it's following that timeline. But the woman that she meets is the other timeline. And that timeline is in the 1930s. And it is like confusing. And I feel like there's not a lot going on. I don't, I'm not captivated by either one of their stories whatsoever. Um, I just feel like it's just, like, life event, life event, life event, and, like, I'm like, okay, enough, enough. And then I go to put this in Goodreads, and I'm reading it, and then I realize that this is the third book in a companion series, and I had book one in that same bookshelf, so I could have read book one, but instead I read the third book. But it's crazy because I didn't realize, like, I'm reading it and they mention a character named Tiny and they know that there's another book with the word Tiny in it. And I was like, oh my god, what if this is related to that book? And I looked at it and it's, like, the second book in a series. And I remember when that book came out and it seemed like a standalone. So I am so blown away that this is actually a third book in a companion series. I don't, I don't know if I'm not enjoying it because I didn't read the first two or what, but I am just, like, mad disappointed. So I'm going to carry through and I'm going to finish the last 200 pages, but I'm just like, I'm just going to keep smiling through it because that's all I can do. Um, so that's it for this video. My next video that I'm going to film is my TBR for my 24-hour readathon that I'm doing tomorrow with myself. Um, it's going to take place tomorrow from 7 a.m., which is June 23rd until Saturday, June 24th at 7 a.m., 7 a.m. to 7 a.m., because I'm never up at midnight anyways, except that one night. Um, and I can only imagine, like, going through a full day of stuff and then having to be up at midnight and read as long as possible. So I'm just going to start at 7. Being a teacher, I'm probably going to be up early the next morning anyways, just because my internal clock is that way. And then I'll just finish reading until 7 a.m., that's my plan. 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. I haven't fully decided, but 
that's my plan. So I will see you in that video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys soon. Bye, everybody.